Hey everybody, Sean Tierney, your instructor here at the Automation School, and in this episode of What's New in School, I'm going to give you a little tour and update about Studio A. That's where I film most of the newer lessons you'll see in uh, 2021 at the school and beyond. And uh, we do have the Studio B over there where I have all the legacy stuff set up. So as I film Slick 500, Micrologix, PLC 5 lessons, you'll probably see that studio and I think you've seen that before if you watch any of my shows over at the automation blog but I really want to focus on studio a today and uh, let's just start with what was wrong with the old one well there really wasn't anything wrong with the old one um I really I had everything set up I had all my Alan Bradley stuff that I bought over the years up there and um had you know ethernet device and that control that we had it all going um but then a couple of years ago, I started working with other vendors and they've been great in sampling me products, products I could never, you know, um, go out and purchase full price. So they actually sampled these products so I could cover them on the blog and the podcast and the show. And I really wanted to, in, in appreciation for that, I wanted to highlight them on the wall. But to do that, I needed more wall space because I still had all of the equipment I had bought. So what I did is I bought some uh, more wall control panels here. And in addition to making the wall wider, I bought some more wall control, uh, wall control panels here. You know, I'll put a link to Amazon in the description if you want to pick this stuff up. And then uh, I reached out to the guys over at wall control to see what the best brackets were. And they sent me like, I don't know, a lot of brackets for free of charge. So really appreciate those guys and a uh, really good company. I think they're all American made. But uh, good stuff, really good stuff. Um, so in any case, you know, that allowed me to make room by moving all the stuff I bought and all the, the demos here I have hanging down here. Um, a lot of them I've robbed pots off of, but I can hang these down there and, um, you know, just pretty much get everything on the wall and off the floor. And I mean, there were just piles of boxes here all winter. But in any case, so the second thing I did, though, in conjunction with that was to, and, and of course, it's still a work in progress. But um, in conjunction with that, what I did was I decided to put everything on removable boards. And that's where all those brackets from wall control came in handy. And the reason I wanted to do that is because I wanted to be able to easily take like a, a complete PLC system, whether it's a Control Logics or a 71500 or whatever, right off the wall and put it on the workbench so that um, so that would be easy. You know, if I'm doing a Control Logics lesson, I pull it off, put it on the workbench, I do those lessons. Then I can put it back up there, put the S7500 down, do lessons on that, and so on. So with that said, I, I played around with this uh, concept a little bit. I tried a lot of different plastics. So, you know, when I first started filming back in 2014 for the Kickstarter, I was using wood. Wood is great, right? A lot of factories use wood for their training areas. You know, the benches out in the electrical shop. But, you know, it's non-conductive, right? So there's no worries there. And um, it's easy to drill and bolt stuff into, right? So very flexible, you can change it a hundred times and, um, you know, just really easy to use. So that's why I started off with that. I figured most people can go down to their local, uh, you know, home and garden, uh, you know, a store and pick up whatever size wood they want and make whatever they want. And actually, some of you students have sent me in pictures of your construction out of wood. And um, I'll tell you, your trainers look pretty awesome. So thank you for sending those in. Um, but that said, you know, when I got the Compact Basics, I wanted to make something a little bit more portable. So I started using cutting boards. And these cutting boards actually work out extremely well. Um, you can get a big cutting board with a nice handle in it for, I don't know, 15 bucks max, maybe 12 bucks. Walmart has them in stock. You just go to your local Walmart or you can buy them online too. And um, I like them because this material, I believe this is HDPE. This material, you can actually tap and put your bolts into it, and they stay there. So not every bolt on this has a nut on the back. You can see I, I have nuts and feet on the back of these. I also designed them so they can stand up, so I got little feet on the front here. So this can just stand up by itself as well. I think you guys have seen this on the shelves um, in uh, previous videos. But I really liked this design. The problem is I didn't want my whole studio to be full of cutting boards. I thought it kind of looked a little, while it's great for somebody building something at home, I just thought it looked a little, uh, a little, I don't know, a little weird. <laughs> you know, cutting boards are not made for, um, not made for uh, demos. I did look around a lot for somebody to make a board like that, um, but that wasn't wasn't a food grade cutting board. It was just a, a like a project board. I found a lot of people who made them, but nothing, nobody was making them in that 
type of plastic, HDPE. And uh, speaking of which, so I went out and I started buying all kinds of plastic from Amazon and other places to test them out. And, um, you know, I tested out things like PVC, HDPE, which I was familiar with, with the cutting board, uh, PP or polypropylene. And I really liked all three of those. The only problem I had with PVC was the PVC was typically twice as much as the HDPE and the polypropylene or the PP. So, um, but these are, um, these are just some, sa uh, some samples I've been robbing pots off them, but these are like little square uh, demo stands I was making. And, um, you know, they, they only flex a very little bit and you can tap the screws, the, tap the holes and put the screws right into the holes. So I did like that about these. Um, this is one by one. I, I ended up saying one by one is just too small. You can't fit enough on it. Um, there was, I did take a look at some other ones. I took a look at acrylic, right? This is acrylic. And as I was screwing and tapping, it's just like, these are, this is brittle stuff. You know, I'm afraid if I drop this, the corner will break off. And I, I haven't dropped it on purpose, but I just didn't like acrylic style products. You can't tap it. You can't screw into them. Obviously, you know, this is bolted right in to, um, you can see, well, some of them have some, some of them are just bolted right in. Some of them have the feet on here with the nuts. But uh, if you look at the pan to it, that's just screwed right in there. And, uh, you know, it's not coming off. It's, it's, it's good. And, uh, but for something you might be moving around up and down, up and down, I just thought, why take the chance with something so brittle? So I decided I don't like acrylic. I also tried, um, expanded PVC, expanded foam. I just didn't, I thought it was just too flexible. If when you, when you press this, you can feel your fingers going into it. It just didn't feel sturdy enough, you know? And so I was like, yeah, PVC expanded foam. Yeah, not for me. Now, um, or not for, for these demo, demo stands. But um, what I did end up deciding to do for a size was to go with quarter inch instead of uh, eighth of an inch. And a couple of reasons for that. I also decided to go with two feet by one foot. Okay, which causes some problems I'll talk to you about. But um, two feet by one foot, I could fit a Control Logics chassis on there. I could fit an S7500 with a bunch of I.O. cards. I could fit, I mean, you just look behind me. You can fit a lot of stuff on that. Um, what I couldn't do is with these guys, you couldn't. You really couldn't get a lot on here. There's a lot of PLCs you can't fit onto this board just because that space is so small, right? So one, one by one was not big enough. So I decided to go with uh, one by two. The only problem with this is um, it's very hard to get your wall control, the panels to line up perfectly so the, so you can span two different boards and still get the hooks in. So I have struggled with that some. You know, sometimes in shipping the, the wall control panels, they get just bent slightly, and that can add a couple of millimeters, and then it's hard to get the hooks on because the hooks are bolted in. So the hooks don't have no left-right movement in them. Um, but still, the one by two is, uh, it was the right size because I can get enough stuff on it. Now, the reason I went with quarter inch instead of an eighth of an inch, I mean, those were strong enough, but the reason I did that is because I could use these boards inside of extruded aluminum. So I'll go to the top camera here. You can see I've made this, uh, this, uh, test stand out of extruded aluminum. Very easy to use. I did some prototypes with Logix Live. That was that online course I did for a bunch of people, um, in the, well, I guess early spring. And that's now lot, that's now free. If you have a PAC basics extended, you got that entire course, another eight hours of training for free with that, uh, because it, it covers very much the same topic. So there's no reason to buy two courses on the same topic. So, and I, I love giving you guys free stuff because you're my students and I love taking care of you. But, uh, that said, um, this size not only was great for mounting on the wall behind me, with uh, the brackets, Wall Control sent me a bunch of brackets. Those guys are great. But um, it also uh, works inside of this extruded aluminum. So, which I got, I found, like I live in the Berkshires, there's not a lot close here. So instead of driving an hour to Springfield or Albany, um, I was looking online and I found the people I did a really good job of, of an online store for this extruded aluminum type stuff was uh, McMaster Car. And, um, you know, again, shipping, you know, because this stuff has to come in big, big uh, boxes, big um, round boxes, you know, there's substantial shipping to it, but it still is uh, better than spending uh, two hours in the car to go back to, to go over to Albany or Springfield to pick something up in person. So with that said, I put together this rig here and uh, these bottom two panels, I don't think these will change out much. As a matter of fact, I'll probably add some stuff to these, like some potentiometers over here. Um, 
But in any case, um, these are, will stay in no matter what the course is. All these buttons and switches will stay in. These these uh, the I/O I chose is really based on what I've done previously with all the previous courses and that type of similar lesson plan. But these panels on the top, all I can do is I can pop this end piece off, and these slide right out. So I can slide in the control logics. I can slide in the S7 um, 1500 board. I can slide in the S7 1200 board. Um, so it makes it very modular for me. So I can get more lessons out to you guys faster, and, uh, and uh, you know, and and uh, you know, using common I/O. So if you take decide to take my new S7 1500 course, you know, we'll be using the same I/O, right? And um, we'll just be using the software for the S7 1500 TIA portal and and the Siemens PLC. However, if we're using the MicroLogics, it'll be there. If we're using the PLC5, it'll be there, and so on. So, uh, and then over here, I have, right now you can see I have, um, this is still not finished. I actually reached out to one of the vendors that sent us a, quite a few samples in the past um, to see if I can get another uh, slim power supply from them because uh, I want to get the two drives in here and I also want to have the meters here and then I got to add the potentiometer somewhere over here. But um, this board will be able to pop out, right? And I'll be able to pop in, let's say I want to put the IFM you know, encoders and temperature sensors on there, slide it in. I have other vendors who sent us in uh, photo eyes and inductive proxies. Um, I could slide their board in. I, I still need to get brackets from, brackets from them. But um, what if uh, we may have, uh, you know, Wago I.O.? Are we going to use Wago I.O. with Alan Bradley or Siemens? We could slide the Wago board in. Um, the SMC board, we could slide in. So it makes it very modular so that I can, I can, you know, instead of having to build something every time I want to teach a lesson, I can you know, slide things in and out and do it that way. And um, now I know not everybody's going to be able to put something like this together. So what I did is I'm working with a company to make our very own trainers. Now I haven't put these in the, on the school yet, but I designed this so that it's, uh, uh, we can use it with pretty much any PLC I'm training you on. And uh, I'm not marketing this yet. I'm actually going to put these up for pre-order for $2,000, 1999 and uh, that's going to be the pre-order price. So eventually they'll they'll sell at regular price for uh, 2200 But I wanted to get them up there at a lower price, see if we can get some pre-orders, because I'd like to stock a couple here in the, in the, uh, in the office as well. And um, I want to um, also, I'll be offering the PLCs with these. So if you need the case with the PLC, I have all the local distributors here. I can just get the PLC from them. And, uh, you know, you can either pay to have it installed or you can install it yourself. I'll include instructions with every case on how to wire it up and install it. But this has enough buttons, switches and lights and two motors, two pots, etc. So you can do all the same lessons. But this is a nice hard case that's, uh, you know, portable and you can stick on a shelf, right? And, uh, you know, I think similar cases from the vendors, they're around 10 grand. So I wanted to come up with something that was less expensive. And that's what we came up with now. I do have a model like this that's going to be, I believe it's going to be $500 less expensive. So probably $1,600, $1,650. Um, and uh, it's going to have half the operators. So the guys who are building this have to wire up half the main uh, number of operators. They have half the operators they have to purchase to put in the box. So it will cost uh, about $500 less. And um, But if you're interested in this, let me know. Um, I'm not ready yet. Just got so much, so much going on. But I haven't put that in the store yet. Also got some great software products and a new, a new Mastering Logics Applications uh, course I'm going to be releasing soon with a great Logics emulator so um, that you'll be able to buy right from us. And if you buy the emulator from us, you get the course for three. The emulator is $299. It's uh, for somebody who can't, you know, if you need everything, if you need Studio 5000 or RS Logics 5000, a PLC and all the operators and everything, and that's just not in your budget, and then this is an all-in-one. It'll be a cost and a complete emulator. Emulates 10 different or 11 different um, worlds or systems, um, including conveyors and fillers and things like that. It's really cool. And I'm almost done that uh, done that course. So that'll be coming out very soon. So something to keep an eye out on that. Be expanding the school very much. We already have books in there, but we'll be adding a lot of other stuff on there as well. Um, with that, I think that's it for this first update. I'm hoping to do these on a very regular basis. Now, I want you to feel free to contact me if you have any questions. We get the phone number at the top of the website there. So if you have questions about the courses, if you have questions on, like, if you have an existing a student and you want to see lessons added to the new courses I'm filming, please do. As is clearly stated on the website, if you have the extended edition, 
of any of my PLC courses, you're getting the new courses completely free. And these new courses, I'll go in this more in another video, but these courses are going to be level one, two, and three. Right now we have pretty much level one and two. I'm in the back, in the behind the scenes, I'm working on getting a PID demo and some other demos, some safety stuff, some servos. So that's all going to be in the level three level. And you guys who have the extended courses will get in that for free. You folks who have the um, the standard courses, again, you can always upgrade from the standard to the extended for just a difference in price. Just just get in touch with me. You can email me. You can call me. Leave me a voicemail. I do shut the phone off when I'm recording videos like this, so you may have to leave me a voicemail. But um, we just got a lot of great stuff happening, and uh, I'm going to be filming a ton of lessons here in the coming coming weeks and months, and I hope you guys enjoy them all. And again, I'd love to hear what you would like to see, and uh, I'm keeping a list of that. I actually have AMA uh, lessons on the uh, ultimate courses um, where you can stop putting in your suggestions and some of you already have. So with that, I think I'm going to end the the uh, the video right here. Um, I hope you find this is helpful. If you did, please let me know. The comments are open. Anybody who has uh, who's logged into the site can leave a comment below this. And uh, I'll probably also publish this over at the automation blog. So people over there, we got over 30,000 regular readers over there. So we want those people to know what's going on at the school as well. And uh, we'll probably throw it out to YouTube as well, just so those folks know as well. We got over 25,000 people over there who sub to our channel. So with that said, I want to wish you all a very safe, happy, and healthy week. And until next time, my friends, peace.